Hi, my name is Mary. Today, FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today, FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bach. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. In the news tonight, don't politicize us, says RFMF. Sadelpa candidate list resubmitted successfully. And FEO advises voters with disabilities to pick carers carefully. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Smith. The Republic of the Fiji Military Forces has sent out a warning to various political parties to refrain from involving the RFMF in political debates and discussions. Recently, some political parties have highlighted the involvement of the RFMF with previous governments and the forces. This should not be the case. Ali Kimbia with the story. They have made their stance clear. The RFMF doesn't want to be involved in political discussions and they will support the government that will come into power. We don't want to get into any political mudsling. Uh, as much as we want to be out of uh, the political uh, discussions between political parties, uh, we are apolitical and we hope that we can move forward in that way. Kaloni Wai says political parties should discuss ideas and policies that will benefit all Fijians. It's just that a matter of the political, party, political parties being mature politically in terms of the way they discuss things, they discuss issues that concern the nation as a whole. The RFMF, together with the Fiji Police Force, will play a major role in safeguarding the interest of all Fijians through upholding the law. We will uh, continue to support the government of the day, and uh, whatever government comes into power, uh, the RFMF will be there. Kaloni Wai says the lead role for providing maximum security and surveillance during the election is the Fiji Police Force and they will be assisting them in whatever way possible. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Sadelpa resubmitted its final list of nominated candidates to the Fijian Elections Office around midday after their attempt earlier this week was rejected due to failure to submit the required bank check. Today, party was represented by General Secretary Andi Liti and Gyoning Baravi and other members. They returned to the elections office with their 51 list of nominees who will contest the election and a banker's check covering a $1,000 payment for each candidate as required. Sadelpa is now the second political party contesting next month's election to submit their list of nominated candidates. The nominations we have received today are in order as per the requirements of the law and they will now be processed as per the electoral act and we will be carrying out verifications and we will respond to Sadalpa within the next 48 hours. We expect it to be received by 4 o'clock tomorrow. We are confident that everything will be alright. Unity Fiji Party will not have the full 51 provisional candidates for the upcoming general election. Party General Secretary Satish Kumar has revealed to FBC News that they will only have 40 provisional candidates. Kumar says they have announced 14 provisional candidates so far and will most likely announce the remaining 26 tomorrow. Kumar says they are looking at the quality of provisional candidates and capitalizing on them to get more votes. He says they will be filing their nomination with the Fijian Elections Office tomorrow. The party will be releasing their manifesto once the candidate's ball draw is done. It seems that Sadelpa leader Sitiveni Rumbuka's claims about party president Ratanayangama Lalambalabu's appointment as party deputy leader was wrong all along. An adamant Rumbuka had told FBC News twice this week that Ratanayangama was the official deputy party leader. Rumbuka had stuck to his guns, despite his claims being denied by Sadelpa General Secretary Andilithi and Gyonimbaravi. On Monday, a visibly upset Andilithia demanded that FBC News retract the story in which Rumbuka had made the claims and also accused FBC of bias despite Rumbuka being on record. However, in a statement yesterday, Ratanayangama supported Andilithia's claims, saying Sadelpa does not have an official deputy leader and any future appointment can only be made by the party management board. When questioned again today, Rumbuka says he will not comment on the issue any further because Ratanayangama is his superior and whatever decision he makes is final. 
The Fijian Elections Office has resumed voter service centre operations around the country. It will continue until November 13th. This means registered voters who may have lost or misplaced their cards can still obtain replacements now that registration of new voters has closed. Voters can no longer change their details and polling venues. The option to change them closed last week Monday. Voter service centres will no longer be accepting uh, any changes to details or new registrations until the election is completed. Uh, this is only a service that we are providing to replace voter cards for Fijians uh, who may have lost it so that they are able to uh, get the details uh, in the card rather than having to answer extra questions on election day. People who will be assisting voters with disabilities on election day are being reminded to exercise extreme care and responsibility. The Fijian Elections Office says it's important for any Fijian chosen to be a carer to understand the processes and what is expected of them, especially as it requires them to mark a ballot paper on someone else's behalf. Kelly Vavala reports. It's important that voters with disabilities are familiar with the person they choose to accompany them to polling stations on November 14th. For any person who is assisting a disabled person in terms of casting their vote, uh, this is uh, the exercise of a constitutional right to, for somebody else. Election Supervisor Mohamed Zanim says a carer must not be involved in the decision-making process. Uh, ensure that this exercise is not affected by your own personal uh, thoughts, feelings or affiliations, but rather reflects the views and the intention of the person for whom you are marking the ballot. For persons with disabilities or who will be accompanied by their carers, I hope that uh, the level of understanding uh, of a person with disabilities and uh, their needs in that uh, critical time of casting their vote is uh, uh, well tolerated by um, uh, a third person or the um, a carer that, that, that is accompanying them. Meanwhile, the Fijian Elections Office says the presiding officers at the polling stations will be available to help any persons with disabilities cast their vote. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Kidney patients in Vanua Level who require dialysis will no longer have to pay $250 for a treatment session. Government today launched the hemodialysis subsidy program for kidney patients in the Northern Division, which will see patients pay only $75. Eleanor Tarangaiview reports. With around 600 Fijians dying from complete kidney failure or end-stage kidney diseases every year, Dialysis has now been made affordable and equitable for all patients in Vono Levu. Those eligible, household income of um, 30,000 and less, will from today will be paying $75 as part of the, uh, the treatment. The subsidy also sees children under 18 years of age getting dialysis treatment at no cost at all. Minister for Health and Medical Services Rosie Akbar also announced that all procedural services such as the hemodialysis catheter insertions and the AV fistula surgeries will be provided free of cost. The initial cost for this would be around 3,500 to 4,000. From today onwards, the Minister of Health, with the services provided by Dr. Amrish, will be, footing, will be picking up the cost for our patients as well. The subsidy program will be launched in Suva next month and it will roll out in the Western Division by the end of January next year. Obviously, there are things that need to be done, machines, equipment, consumables that needs to come in the country before we can start that. But I'm pleased to say we are well on track with our plans. And I'm sure this is going to bring relief uh, to the people who have been paying so much for dialysis services. $3.5 million was set aside in the 2018 and 2019 budget for the kidney dialysis subsidy program. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. Still to come, 61 assisted under first home ground policy and hundreds attend FBC's free Independence Day concert. Details after the break. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go Nakas, on the Wagarong and Bulafe, Nabondo and Nasir. Oya was it says, Lombasa.
There was an attempted break-in at the Fiji First Party headquarters on Brown Street in Suva yesterday. This is the second report of vandalism lodged by the party. Police Chief Operations Officer ACP Martino Giolevu says the report was received at the Totongo police station after volunteers saw writing on the walls outside the party headquarters. Meanwhile, no arrests have been made regarding the vandalizing of the Fiji First billboard in Lamy. Investigation of both cases continue. A group comprised of sailors, actors and a marine biologist are currently in the country to raise awareness of the growing concern of plastic pollution. The Eat Less Plastic group started their campaign in California in May and have sailed to seven island states before reaching Fiji with hopes to educate people on the harmful effects of plastic. Philippe Nicasso has more. Eat Less Plastic! They're on a mission to reduce the use of plastic and show people the damage caused by plastic pollution to the ocean and environment. We've got a big problem here with plastics. Uh, it's a global problem. It affects the world. It affects all the fish and everything in the oceans. So that is why I'm doing something about it, really. The crew will also be visiting schools and local communities to share their stories and videos on the harmful environmental effects of plastic. They're also expected to meet Prime Minister Vorenge Banyamarama. That there is a problem, but uh, we're also trying to make people aware that there's also a lot of solutions and there's a lot of day-to-day -day things that we can do to change our habits around single-use plastics and certainly the way in which they end up in the environment, you know, specifically in the ocean. I love our oceans. Yeah, our oceans give us so much life. There's so much mana things in the ocean and, uh, yeah, I have great respect for it. A cleanup campaign has been organized by the Eat Less Plastic Crew this Saturday at Wailolo Beach in Nandi. Philippe and I, Castle, FBC News. 61 people have been assisted under the first home buyer grant policy in the first two months of this financial year. The Housing and Community Development Ministry received a total of 70 applications, of which nine were rejected as they did not meet the criteria. Savaritambo reports. First-time buyers with an annual income under $50,000 will receive $15,000 towards land and house or $10,000 just for the land, while families who make between $50,000 a year and above also qualify for this grant assistance, with $10,000 provided for the land and house package or $5,000 for the readily built home. Most of these will qualify. When I say most, at least about 85 to 90 percent of these will qualify, which then goes to say nearly 60 uh, or 60, 60 people plus uh, Fijians would qualify. The ministry has paid out a total of $545,000 to the successful applicants. I wish to encourage all Fijians to take advantage of uh, this government initiative. Of the 61 successful applicants, eight received grants of $15,000 each to buy land, 32 qualified for $10,000 home grant, while 21 who earned about $50,000 received $5,000. Savaira Tambua, FBC News. Two former employees of the then Public Works Department were sentenced today for corruption-related charges. Amelia Vunise received a custodial sentence of two years and eight months, while Lysa Halafi will serve a four-year term in prison. The two pleaded guilty to one count each of abuse of office and two counts each of causing a loss. In addition, Halafi has been convicted of one count of obtaining a financial advantage of $300. It was revealed in court that the actions of the two cost the then PWD over $10,000. Both are serving prisoners on conviction for other corruption charges and will serve their new sentences concurrently. The first free Fiji Day concert organized by the Fiji Broadcasting Corporation attracted hundreds of people to Albert Park in Suva yesterday. Gold FM program director Kara Koroi says the park was a sea of blue with people from all walks of life coming together to celebrate the historic event on the Fijian calendar. Kritika Kumar reports. <laughs> The public turned out in large numbers to celebrate Fiji Day in a united manner and enjoy the free Independence Day concert organized by the FPC. It was such a great occasion for everybody to come and hang out. We saw that there was an enormous sense of pride and patriotism amongst those who came in and it was so good. Koroi also revealed the reason behind choosing Albert Park as the venue for the celebration. We chose Albert Park not only for its convenience but because that's where it all started. 
we sort of took ourselves back to 1970 when we gained independence. So 48 years later, FBC decided to throw a huge free concert to celebrate Fiji Day. FBC events team leader Ruby Solanki says the event was more special as the residents of the old people's home were also part of the celebrations. We had, um, we had invited the, the residents of old people's home and they all turned up to the event and just seeing them enjoying themselves uh, throughout the, our entire event. And we saw little kids coming out in their blue colors with the Fiji flags. The theme for Fiji Day was Give Back to Fiji and it was a great time for families and friends to come together and enjoy the 48th year of independence. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Coming up in sports later with Jamie, winger Salesi Rayasi shines for Auckland in the Mitre 10 Cup. But before that, here's Rachel with all the day's business updates. Thanks Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break. Final preparations for Prime Minister's awards underway. And in growing Fiji, FRA finds new way to fix potholes. Stay with us. Lola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Seni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Africa, Coraco, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM. Only the classic kids. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altiga, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic. In a business tonight, the date of the 2018 Prime Minister's International Business Awards has been finalised and preparations are now underway. The premium business event will be held at the Sofitel Fiji Resort and Spa on November 24th. This year's awards will feature 12 categories recognizing all sectors of the economy. Investment Fiji Chief Executive Guda Muller-Tewitt says many businesses have shown interest in the awards. He says the most sought-after categories are the best small business operating internationally as well as the Young Entrepreneurship and Excellence in Innovation Awards. Also, he says there is a growing interest in other categories and encourages more Fijian businesses to apply. And we now join Sunifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the trading markets. Let's have a quick look at the global foreign exchange markets. The US dollar was steady against a basket of currencies today after investors drove US stocks to their worst fall in nearly eight months overnight. This has also raised the stakes for US inflation figures due later tonight as a high outcome would only stoke speculation of more aggressive rate hikes from the Federal Reserve. Closer to home, monetary policy won't change the Australian economy's speed limit, so it might take a while for them to absorb spare capacity in their labour market. Later tonight, we have Bank of England's Governor Kani's speech, followed by US inflation figures and New Zealand's performance manufacturing index for September. That's all from HFC Bank for now. Vinaka. Thank you, Sanifa. On to today's exchange rates. The Fiji dollar showed gains against the US greenback as well as the Aussie and the Kiwi dollar. Meanwhile, while gaining against our major trading partners, our dollar showed some minor slippage against the other currencies we cover. As for the commodities market, oil prices dropped to close at $72 a barrel. Gold was on the rise to close at 1,192 an ounce and silver dropped slightly to close at 14.30 an ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, the Fiji Roads Authority has adopted a new method of fixing potholes. Concerns have often been raised that despite repairs being carried out, potholes often reappear in the same places after a heavy rain. Pranisa Prakash reports. The Fiji Roads Authority says a proper refurbishment is needed to stop the recurrence of potholes on the road. Unfortunately, where there were potholes before, you can't do another pothole. You have to do a carriageway refurbishment. And until now, um, people have been trying to put potholes on potholes. So that just doesn't work. The chief executive says changes have been made to the policies to deal with the potholes. So what we're doing now, instead of that old policy, we're, where we get multiple potholes appearing in the same location, we'll change the carriageway. 
rip it all out, we'll remix it and resurface it. That's the only way to do it. Um, even the contractors know you can't put potholes in potholes, but they had no, no choice in the past. Uh, we've changed that policy now to, to not do it anymore. Meanwhile, the drivers are saying more work is needed to fix this problem. We need more work. All the drivers in Fiji, they know it. So I think more is required to be done on the Fiji roads, right around. Yeah, there's too much, many, too many potholes on the road. Some more is to be done. The Fiji Roads Authority has been allocated a total of $563.1 million in the 2018-2019 national budget to repair the road networks. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. And that's business for tonight. Jamie joins you now with sports. Thank you, Richard, and good evening. Up here in sports, weightlifting saga likely to come to an end soon. And Fiji and Rua gunning for top of the table finish. This and more coming up. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mitch FM. Mitch FM is hot. I'm Charlene Robert. Mitch FM rocks in Lambasa. I'm Sona Men. I'm Sodi Jackson. Mitch FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Bubble Single Line. Mitch FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Pritika from Jackson, Nasori. I love listening to Mitch FM here in Nasori. Mitch FM is hot. Mitch FM is hot. The Fiji National Sports Commission hopes to bring the impasse between weightlifting Fiji and its Livuka-based lifters to an end soon. Commission Chair Peter Mazey says the parent body has agreed to work with the lifters who pulled out of the sport after the appointment of coach Jose Tabakoli. Merli Tavanga with the details. The saga between weightlifting Fiji and the Livuka Weightlifting Club will soon be over. Agreed to meet with, uh, to meet with all the athletes just to work a way out with the athletes and with the coach, with Joe Buarty, to get them back to training and representing Fiji. The Vuka Weightlifting Club president, Penny Tawai, says they will only rejoin if the agreement is based on their previous discussions. Because the problem still exists. When we come, when we talk with them, they should email us and send us uh, the program or the open uh, the criteria for what is being discussed. Right now, there's no national coach to guide our weightlifters. He's uh, set down from that position until such times as weightlifting Fiji sorts out the problems with our elite weightlifters. Next month, the Fiji Sports Commission will meet with both parties to settle the ongoing issues so Levuka's elite lifters can once again represent Fiji in future competitions. Beli Tavanga, FBC Sports. The Fiji Airways and Rua is hoping to create history by finishing on top of the Australian National Rugby Championship table in just their second season. In the top of the table class, the Nrua faces the Western Force, and Captain Moses Evoca believes his players has what it takes to deliver on game day. Russell Prasad reports. Fiji and Rua coach Senirusi Serovakula says they have put in the hard yards to finish on top of the NRC table this Saturday. This year we've developed a really good from last year, uh, a lot of learnings from uh, every game and, uh, and they were uh, gaining confidence. Western Force have proved they have a powerful forward pack and Drua skipper Moses Evoca says they are ready to tackle. Especially on the, on the forge and the scrum out D and line D, they've been doing well and also I mean, we will try to improve again. These players have performed extremely well so far and are only a match away from creating history against the Australian teams. Just have to execute our like set piece, scrums, line out, and play our game, right, play our cards right. If we do that right, I think we'll be okay on Saturday. The Drua takes on the force at 6 p.m. on Saturday. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. A new look kangaroo side has settled in Auckland as they look to maintain a nearly two dec decade long undefeated run against the Kiwis on Saturday. Coach Mal Meninga naming four debutants in his lineup as both sides launch their next generation of stars. Auckland is back on top of the premiership standings after a comfortable 56 8 victory over winless Southland in the Mitre 10 Cup, 
Weng Salesi Rayasi was the star of the first half, sprinting 70 meters to score the opening try. Fasanaka has received a major boost ahead of the Fiji Hall of Fame and Fiji Olympic Order Awards, which will be held on Saturday. Erasito Consultants Limited throwing its support for Fasanak through sponsorship of the event. The company not only has a long history of assisting Fasanak and local sports federations, but athletes as well. We've also had some uh, sporting people who we employed in the past, uh, such as uh, Leslie Copeland, uh, the javelin thrower. We employed him... Uh, I think it started around 2012, if I remember correctly. Andrea Whiteside, badminton. Elaiji Irasito, Thierry Irasito, and Kamoe Irasito. In today's play of the day, J.D. Martinez showing his class with an opening three-run homer for the Boston Red Sox in their 4-3 win over the Yankees in the American League Championship Series. That's it from Sports Tonight. Join and Angie later on with weather and the new media. Take a look at Google's soon-to-be-released Pixel 3 smartphone. That's coming up. Radio Fiji One, Hingatoka. Radio Fiji One, Nandomo Iviti. In new media using a combination of machine learning and excellent hardware. Google's newest phone takes on Apple and Samsung's flagships. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Hope you and your family had a wonderful Fiji day. Big thanks to Rain for holding up. But for today, the showers couldn't hold up for too long and that is why we had short bursts of rain. Looking at the west, quite mild, some sunshine. Eastwards from Pak Haber Suva, slightly windy with intervals of heavy rain, more in store tonight. And up north, quite humid with sunshine being the winner for the day. At sea, easterly winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, high tide at 8 or 9 p.m. and low tide at 2.28 a.m. Sunrise at 5.39. For tomorrow, Super Friday and it is expected to be less rainy. Tomorrow's temps, all centres will be hitting the lower 30 degree range. And looking further on to Saturday, seems like we're in the rainy season now as the weather ahead mostly consists of light showers. And that's all from the FPC Weather World. Jack. Thanks so much for that Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, should police beef up patrol in the lead up to the election? I believe they should uh, be more uh, police patrol, eh? um, just for security uh, reasons. It should be more patrol uh, because of uh, the need to be protection in the public, more protection in the public. Eh? Yes, we need more police, especially during elections for people's sake. It's better to have more police on the ground because we don't know people's intentions. So to ensure people's safety, it's crucial to have more police officers available. I believe so, because sometimes maybe when during a congestion like that, maybe fights can occur, who knows? Maybe during um, traffic jams, they can be on the watch to control traffic jams. At the world of the weird and the wonderful, it's a known fact that dogs are regarded as a man's best friend, but one such pooch is now acting as a reading tutor for shy child at a school in Scotland. Recapping the main stories for tonight, don't politicize us, says RFMF. Sidelba candidate list resubmitted successfully. And FEO advises voters with disabilities to pick carers carefully. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment this week, we're asking, should every Fijian fly a flag for Fiji Day week? 
Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day, Fijians around the country celebrated the 48th Independence Day in style. This picture was taken at Ravi Ravi Estate in Sabu Sabu by Alice Samira. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe. Good night. My name is Nan, I'm from Lumbua. As Friendly North is famous, the radio is famous in Radio Fiji 2. Radio Fiji 2 is the country of the country. I'm from Radio Fiji 2, I like to listen to Radio Fiji 2. This is the country of Radio Fiji 2. I'm Uncle King, I'm from Taxi Driver. I'm from Rugby 5, I'm from Rugby 5. I'm from Radio Fiji 2. 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 I'm from Radio Fiji 2.